May I now present Nulo O'Connor, President and CEO of the Center for Dem Democracy and Technology. Thank you. It is a joy to be here, an absolute joy to be here at the, the Knight Center, at the museum, at this pivotal time in the debate around the First Amendment and free speech. This is a venerable institution and we stand with you and we thank our partners, the Charles Koch Institute and the Museum Institute for all they have done. I also want to thank our entire team at CDT. Every single one of us worked in some way to bring this event to fruition, but most especially, you've already met Brian Wazlowski, our Chief of Staff and Communications Director, and Emma Lonzo, our Freedom of Expression Director, who both worked tirelessly with our partners to create this remarkable day. This year is the 20th anniversary of the historic Supreme Court case Reno v. ACLU. That case extended full First Amendment protections to online speech. That case and the debates of 20 years ago set the stage for the unprecedented growth of the internet and the amplification of diverse voices that we have today. But as we see so clearly with legislation before the Senate this very week that would undermine core protections for intermediaries online, our work to protect free expression matters just as much, if not more so, today. The fact is also that the internet is a profoundly different place today than it was 20 and 25 years ago when CDT was first founded. And it's time to rehash those difficult conversations that we had way back at the beginning, to have challenging, thought-provoking, and productive conversations about the rights of the individuals and the institutions that make up this internet community. So, we need to talk. We need to talk about hate speech. My good friend Chris Wolf is here today and we honor his work on this area. We need to talk about how government action has chilled speech online, not only around the world, but in our own country here at home. We need to talk about how platforms make decisions that influence the information that we see and impact the very democracy in which we live. Creating those conversations, creating that collaborative space has always been CDT's core work and central to our advocacy approach. For more than 20 years, it is what has made CDT a place that is hopefully welcoming to all of you and to all viewpoints. It is what helped our founder, Jerry Berman, work and create a coalition to bring Section 230 to reality. And it's what will continue in our DNA always. So let's start the conversation with a look at how the foundational debates of 20 years ago shaped today's reality for online speakers of all kinds. I welcome Vivian Schiller, the, my new friend and veteran journalist of NPR, New York Times, CNN, and Twitter, to moderate a, a panel of experts from today and back in the day. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for spending your day with us. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd echo my thanks again to the guests and speakers and everyone for attending, and hand it over to Nula to close us out. Thanks so much. <clears throat> So I was given the unenviable task of trying to wrap up and find the big themes and tell you what you heard, but I'm not going to tell you what you heard. You heard what you heard. I'm going to tell you a little bit what I heard and hopefully things that resonate. But first, I do want to, again, say thank you to Museum Institute, Koch Institute, and the team at CDT who put this together. Um, Ajit Pai stole my Voltaire quote. Um, it is, I, the thing that was running through my mind all morning was, I wholly disapprove of what you say, and I will defend to the death your right to say it. Who actually said it? I'm going to call on you. I used to teach school. It wasn't Voltaire. Nope. I thought it was Alexander Hamilton, because you know, Hamilton. But it wasn't. Who was it? There's one person in the room who knows, because he fact-checked me. It was a woman. And her name was Evelyn Beatrice Hall. And she's a historian. And she was writing about Voltaire. But in any case, there's an example of 
taking credit for someone else's work. Anyway, um, and of course, the, the quote's about death, and I've been talking about death a lot this summer, and yes, I'm going to go there, Brian. I'll go low, and then I'll go high. Don't worry. Um, but we've seen firsthand the life and death consequences of speech in this country recently, in Charlottesville, and around the world in the threats made to journalists and in the work that so many important people do in making sure voices, marginalized voices are heard. So this has been a great day of conversations about how important that conversation is. And I will take some point of pride in being part of the team organizing an event at which Bob Corn Revere dropped the F-bomb before 10 o'clock in the morning in Washington, DC, because that rarely happens, right? And I just think that's great. And yes, that is the kind of people we are at CDT. And the adult beverages, too, by the way. So, um, and we were also very mindful of serving you and your time and the importance of your day and being inclusive of diverse voices, people of color, women, people of different genders, and sexual preference and orientation. And we're mindful of being in this space, in the museum, and this challenging time for that important institution. And I want to remind you, it honors all parts of the First Amendment. There are a lot of different parts we didn't even get to today. So I'm just going to cover a couple of the quotes and the conversations that resonated with me really quickly. I'm very mindful of standing in between you and the bar, as they always say. Um, Julia Angwin, my dear friend and journalist, said, you know, this year I kind of got up to speed on the First Amendment. Previously, I was kind of just taking it for granted. And you know, that's true. I think in this country, we've, t we've taken a lot of our freedoms for granted. And maybe one of the positive outcomes of this last year is that we've all really had to think about what we value, the institutions, the values themselves, and our role. The, we as individuals and we as parts of larger organizations have a role. CDT has always been dedicated to speech, and no more, no less than today. And it's, of course, I think time for all of us to dedicate ourselves to the fundamental right of every individual every individual to speak. Um, Anna Prosser Robertson, a self-described enthusiast for inclusivity, described the phenomenon of leaders and thinkers becoming rigid in their goals. And I think that's something for us to take away in the internet community. When the needs around us have changed, the user population has changed, and the use case of the internet has changed. Just look at the Pew research about who is online, their educational levels, the numbers, and how the internet is used in people's daily lives. It is not the same internet that it was in 1994 when CDT was founded. And the dear Rebecca McKinnon, thank you for joining us today. It's about power. It's about power over my ability to speak and to access other speech. That's really what it comes down to, and it's a different power structure than it was. And companies have power, and we as individuals still, I believe, have power. But my favorite conversation of the day was one that none of you heard, and it was with someone that many of you don't know, and that is going to remain nameless, in the bathroom, because this is where the best conversations happen, right? In the ladies' room, a woman I know a little bit came up to me and said, Thank you for that thing you put on Facebook. So Facebook finally gets a positive shout out. I'm sorry to our friends at Facebook. Oh my gosh. Um, the thing I put on Facebook was the eulogy for my former husband and the father of my children. He died a couple of weeks ago after a long battle with addiction. And I wrote it for my children. This is a story for them. And she said, you know, I have a parent with the same problem. And no one has ever said out loud the things that you said. That is community to me, the ability to reach across straight, almost to a stranger and, and say, you know, that helped me. That touched me. I understand my world a little better, and I understand you a little better. That, to me, is the power of speech. It's the power of the internet. It's the power of community and what we're trying to do and what we're trying to get right when we work on these issues. And how do we create those safe spaces? Because I'm mindful of my race and my gender and my relative power in that community. And our obligation in those roles to hold space and to hold time and to lift up the voices of so many others. How do we create spaces that are free to speak and yet safe to speak? for marginalized speakers, for all speakers.
but I'm not in this dark death mood, and you know, not too much anymore, well, a little bit. Um, but every day when you get to wake up is a gift. And every day when you get to work at CDT is a gift. And every day when you get to work on these issues to help others and serve the community, these are gifts. Not everybody has these gifts. And you have spent this day with us, and we are gifted by your presence, and we are grateful. And I want to leave you with, I think, one of the most important quotes, and I just tweeted it. People talk about this beautiful free speech, and I ask, where is it? That was DeRay. That is the question we have to answer for ourselves, for our communities, for our children. Those are questions our children should not have to ask. That is the work we do, and we thank you for sharing it with us, and we thank you for your partnership and your support, and now it's time to go outside and enjoy the day. Thank you.